Succinylcholine is a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker used frequently in the emergency department for rapid sequence intubation. This is different from rocuronium, which we talked about in another video in this series, which is a non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. The difference here is that succinylcholine works by binding to the postsynaptic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, leading to depolarization. Unlike acetylcholine, which dissociates from the nicotinic receptor and is hydrolyzed by acetylcholinesterase, succinylcholine remains bound to the receptor preventing further depolarization. The initial binding and depolarization leads to muscle fasciculations, which you could see during induction and paralysis of rapid sequence intubation, which you don't get with non-depolarizing paralytics like rocuronium. The typical dose for succinylcholine is 1 to 1.5 mg per kilogram. So take the average 70 kg male, if you were to paralyze them for rapid sequence intubation, you would dose them 70 to 105 mg of succinylcholine. Now speaking pharmacology. The onset of action is typically 45 to 60 seconds. The duration of paralysis is typically 10 to 15 minutes. Now compared to rocuronium, which is another commonly used paralytic for RSI, it has a duration of action of up to an hour. This just goes to illustrate that the effects of paralysis of succinylcholine is much shorter. Given that you know this now, if you wanted the effects of paralysis to wear off quickly, for example if you wanted to reassess a patient's neurologic exam, with succinylcholine you'll be able to do your exam much sooner compared to rocuronium. Another time you would consider the use of succinylcholine is if you wanted to extubate a patient quickly after a procedure. However, there are numerous contraindications which make the use of this medication less desirable. Succinylcholine has been shown to increase potassium levels leading to hyperkalemia. Studies have shown this increase in potassium is approximately 0.5 milliequivalents per liter, which may be insignificant in patients with a normal potassium level, but that being said, you should take caution in patients who are already predisposed to developing hyperkalemia, for example crush victims, patients with and stage renal disease, or patients with rhabdomyolysis, and burn victims. Succinylcholine has also been shown to increase intraocular pressure, may cause malignant hyperthermia, and has been associated with bradycardia. In the emergent setting, you often don't know the patient's complete medical history, or the complete history of your patient's present illness, and as a result, it may be difficult to determine whether or not there are any contraindications to paralyze your patient with succinylcholine. This may be one of the reasons why some providers will often choose an alternative agent for paralysis, such as rocuronium, in the emergent setting.